You were made for a purpose. God has a plan specifically designed for you. And in order for Him to fulfill that plan in your life, He needs to conform you to the likeness of His Son, Jesus. And meant no words. It's a painful process. But it is necessary. It is vital. In order for us to reflect the radiance of God, in order for us to prosper and to flourish, in order for us to advance and to excel, to be more than we are today, to be greater than we are. It is necessary. The forging process is a very violent process. There's a lot of pain and suffering involved in conforming sinful man into the likeness and perfection of Christ Jesus our Lord. We all must go through it. There's no way to escape it. If we are going to one day reflect the true radiance of God, there needs to be a purging. There needs to be a cleansing. There needs to be a molding, a shaping that takes place in our life. The question is, will we be willing to go through it? Or will we run from it? Or will we accept God's plan, His perfect plan, His perfect will for our life, even if it includes trials and tribulation and persecution and hardship. Paul said, bring the rain. I don't care what it is, Lord, that you have in store for me, as long as it's conforming me to your likeness, it's all worth it. Let's stand and let's take a peek at what Paul experienced and what he has to share with us today. We'll be reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 31. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 31. Are they servants of Christ? I'm out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak? And I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin? And I do not inwardly burn. If I must boast then, I will boast of the things that show my weaknesses. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. You may be seated. There were some religious leaders going around and bragging about their religiosity. They were going around bragging just about how spiritual they were. And Paul says, oh yeah? I must be out of my mind, but I'm going to go there to make a point. I know what it's like to suffer. I know what it's like to experience trials and tribulations firsthand. Can anybody match my resume? All of you religious leaders out there bragging and boasting about your spirituality, can you compare your life to mine? Come on. I challenge you. Let me see your resume. Let me see your credentials. No, I know what it's like to suffer. How many of you have been beaten with rods, have been flogged, have spent a night and a day in the open sea? I know that would be pretty terrible. I think of all the things that, that, are, uh, that he suffered and went through here. and Just imagine you bobbing around like a worm on the open sea with all those massive sea creatures just cruising around beneath you in complete darkness. That gives me chills up and down my spine just to think about having to just be out there wondering when that shark 
that's going to come along. When maybe that whale or a barracuda or jellyfish or what other crazy looking sea creatures beneath the surface would come along to take a nibble out of this little worm, right? But he says, I, I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bats, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I've labored and toiled and on and on and on. He's saying, listen, I know what it takes. But then he goes on to say that even in this, through all of this, I must boast. I will boast of the things that show my weakness. You see, Paul learned a lot about his character as he was being forged in the fire. As he was going through the difficult and challenging hard times. You see, it's easy to praise Jesus in the good times. Jesus is great. Jesus is good. Yeah. He's awesome. And then we get in those situations where we're starting to feel a little pain. There's a little pressure, a little heat. And we're like, you go, God, are you even there? Where are you, God? Do you even exist? Do I even believe? And we start doubting. We start questioning. We start wondering whether this God we've been believing in is even real. Or if we made him up in our minds. We start losing it. We start becoming unglued, unraveled. Paul says, I don't mind this. Because in and through this, I learn a lot about me and my weaknesses. I learn those areas in my life that I need to strengthen, that I need to polish, that I need to perfect, that I need to focus on. For a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So Paul looked at himself and said, okay, I'm strong here, I'm strong here, but I'm weak there, I'm weak there. And the trials and the hardships and the persecution expose those weaknesses. Just like when metal is being forged in the fire. It, it exposes the imperfections. It exposes the weaknesses. And so the, the craftsman, the blacksmith, he, he continues to hammer and pound on that piece of metal and fold it and bend it and hammer it and heat it up and stick it in the cold water and he, heat it up again and bang it and bang it until he gets all the imperfections out, all of the debris, all of the imp all of the, um, the slag, removes all the slag, all the dross. And so God is in the process of doing that for you and for me today. There's profit in pain. Profit in pain. Learning is a gift even when pain is your teacher. Here's what you profit from the pain. It strengthens your faith. When you go through painful times, when you go through the dark times in life, when the cloud seems to never leave you, when the storm does not cease, your faith is strengthened. Isaiah 40, 29, listen to what it says. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. I can honestly tell you when you are going through hardships, when you are going through trials, when you are going through tribulations, you are going to find yourself weak at times. Where you thought you were once strong, you're going to recognize that you are now weak. That where you thought you once had it going on, not so much anymore. And so you learn a lot about your strength. Your faith when you go through difficult and challenging times. It's easy to say, well, I have great faith. Really? You have great faith? Tell God you have great faith. And He'll test it. Not because He needs to know, but because you need to know. Because I think, oftentimes we think we have great faith. And God says, well, let me reveal the kind of faith you really do have. It's easy to have faith when things are going well. But when you're going through hardships and trials and tribulations, that's a different story. You see, Christians overcome because the fire in them burns brighter than the fire around them. Christians overcome because the fire in them burns brighter than the fire around them. You will shine brighter in the midst of pitch black darkness than you ever will when things are going your way. 
It is when things are not going your way that you shine bright. You see, it's not the tough times that last, but tough people. God makes us tough. He conforms us to the likeness of His Son. He empowers us. He enables us. He gives us strength we never thought we could possess. It strengthens our faith. Faith in God. Faith in His Spirit. Faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Knowing that in and through this trial, God is working out everything for His glory and our good. Guaranteed every time. And that's why Paul says, you know what? I don't mind going through all of these things. And there's more to come. He was just sharing a little bit of what he had already gone through. He doesn't go in through, into what he's going to go through. This is just what happened up to this point in time. I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I'm not lying. Paul says, listen, I'm not lying about these things. This is crazy stuff that I went through. But my God was with me all the way. And through it all, he exposed areas where I needed to strengthen. It also enables us to overcome temptation. Paul points out there, who is weak? And I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin? And I do not inwardly burn. Paul says, through this purging, through this cleansing process, I find that I have a greater ability to overcome temptation. In Philippians 4.13 it says this, I can do all things through Him who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul says, you know what? Because of God and what He's doing in my life, I can overcome the things that tear people's lives apart. I can have victory where other people are experiencing defeat. I'm an overcomer, an overachiever. I succeed, I excel, I advance where other people are stumbling and falling and are, are being won over by Satan to do his will. I'm able to overcome. I'm able to defeat that ancient foe, Satan. There's something else. It exposes, as I mentioned, our weaknesses. In 2 Corinthians 12.10 it says, That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. He says, look, I, I take pleasure in my weaknesses. In other words, because I learn from my weakness. I learn about myself, my character, my nature. God knows all about me. But I need to know more about me. God wants you to know your, where you're at in your relationship with Him. What areas of your life that still need to be worked on. And so Paul took great delight in learning about his limitations. He took great delight in learning about those areas in his life that needed a bit more attention. And so he says here that that's why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Because you see, when you're going through the dark times in life, you find yourself leaning on God. You find yourself depending upon Him more and more. You find yourself leaning on the strong tower, that pillar, that rock, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, strength doesn't come from what you can do, but from doing what you once thought you couldn't do. See, many of us put limits upon ourselves. We limit what we can do. And God says, I want to stretch you beyond your limits. I want to show you just what you were capable of of doing for me and for my glory and for the people that you love, those you cherish, those who are precious to you. I want to show you just what you can accomplish with me by your side. But in order for that to happen, you need to lean on me. You need to trust in me. You need to hold on to me. I need to be the rock upon which you stand. I need to be your foundation. I need to be your strong tower. I need to be the wind in your sail. When the storm comes, yes, keep rowing to shore, but keep trusting in God all the way. Trust in God and keep rowing to shore.
it also forces us to our knees. I can tell you from experience and from observation that Christians don't spend enough time on their knees before God in prayer. They don't. Prayers are usually quick and fast. We get straight to the point, God, I need this, 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 and this. Take care of that. Do this. Go here. Go there. Fix that. Work on this. We good? I'm out. Got it? Cool. How many of us are spending time on our knees? Well, if we go to Ezra, chapter 9, verse 4 through 6. Then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel on account of the unfaithfulness of the exiles gathered to me. And I sat appalled until the evening offering. But at the evening offering I rose from my humiliation even with my garment and my robe torn. And I fell on my knees and stretched out my hands to the Lord my God. And I said, O oh my God, I am ashamed and embarrassed to lift up my face to you, my God. For our iniquities have risen above our heads and our guilt has grown even to the heavens. Ezra understood the power of prayer in difficult and challenging times. He was looking around him and he was seeing the devastation, the sin, the licentiousness, the drunkenness, the debauchery, the homosexuality, the sexual immorality, the pervert. He was looking at it all. And he's saying, God, these are dark times. We need you, God. We need you to be a part of our lives. We need you to come and deliver us from this pain, from this suffering. Ezra was feeling what was going on around him. And many of us today are feeling what's happening around us. It's, it's disturbing. It's, it's haunting. It's, it's dark. It's sinister. What's happening in our world today. And it affects us. It affects our children. It affects our relationship. It affects our lives. It brings us pain. It brings us anguish. It brings us suffering of soul, of spirit. And Ezra said, I fell to my knees. I fell on my knees and stretched out my hand to the Lord my God. And I said, oh my God, I'm ashamed and embarrassed to lift up my face to you, my God. For our iniquities has risen above our heads and our guilt has grown even to the heavens. He's saying, we have polluted this world so much, Father, that it is now elevated to the heavens. And we're living a time right now where man's inhumanity to man is increasing, never increasing. It's on the rise like never before. Hatred, bigotry, racism, you name it. It's on the rise. Wars and rumors of wars. It forces us to our knees. When we're going through these times, you will find that you will be on your knees more so than ever before. We profit from pain. It connects us to Christ on a more personal level as well. That's something else we can, we can experience. It's connecting to Christ on a more personal level. People say, I want to know Jesus. Really? Do you really want to know Him? Yeah, I want to have an intimate relationship with Christ. Do you know what it's going to cost you? Jesus said, you must count the cost. If you want to follow me, understand this. It's going to come at a cost. Paul understood that and he shared what it cost him. Philippians 3, chapter 8. Uh, excuse me, Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 through 11. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ and may be found in Him not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being conformed to His death in order that I may attain to the resurrection of the dead Paul says I want to know Jesus 
I want to know him intimately and I know what it's going to take. So Jesus, bring the rain. Bring it. Because if that's what it takes to know you, then I want to go through it. Because you see to Paul, that's what mattered. Paul had everything. He was wealthy, he was prominent, he was smart, he was intelligent. He had a network of well-known individuals. He was a religious leader, knew the law. And yet he says here, more than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value. He said, the value of knowing Christ surpasses anything else I've ever experienced in life. I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ and may be found in Him not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law but that which is through Christ faith in Christ the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith that I may know Him He says if this is what it takes to get to know Jesus I'm willing to go through it because that's what ultimately matters. Not my material possessions, not my financial wealth, not my status, not my prominence, not how many people I know or how intelligent I am. That doesn't compare. None of that compares to knowing Jesus intimately. So I will count all of that as rubbish for the sake of knowing Jesus intimately. I'll let go of this to obtain that which Jesus Christ died for upon that cross and that's a relationship with God that's what mattered most to Paul so it connects us to Christ on a more personal level you see Paul learned a lot about suffering he could connect with Jesus in the suffering he knew what it was like to be flogged he watches you know people being flogged He's, he heard about the floggings of, of Christ and so we, and he himself was being flogged. He could connect with his Savior, his Lord, his God, and say, wow, Jesus, you suffered a lot for me. You went through a lot to save a wretched man like me. He could connect with Jesus on a more personal level. It also does something else. It builds endurance. Endurance, stamina. In 2 Timothy 4, chapter 4, verse 7, it says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Paul says, listen, I fought the good fight. In other words, I was in the fight. I fought the good one. And I finished the race. I didn't quit. Yeah, I might have been shipwrecked. I might have been bitten by a snake. I might have been left out on the sea. I might have been flogged. I might have been beaten with a rod. I, I might have gone through all of this, but I didn't quit. I endured it all and am better because of it. I'm more knowledgeable, more wise, more faithful, more in tune with my Savior, my Lord, my God than ever before. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. I didn't, in other words, I didn't lose faith. When I was out there bobbing around on the sea, I didn't lose faith. When my ship was wrecked, I didn't lose faith. When they were beating me, I didn't lose faith. When I was being stoned, I didn't lose faith. I didn't turn my back on God. I didn't walk away from Him. How many of us have thought about walking away from Christ? Because we're going through difficult and challenging times. We begin to doubt. We begin, begin to not believe that He's real, that He cares, that He loves. We begin to question His love, His faithfulness. We begin to question His presence. Does He even care? If He cared, if He was such a loving God, He wouldn't let me go through this. No, because He's a loving God, He does allow you to go through it because He wants you to be up close and personal with Him. That's what he wants, ultimately what he wants. And he knows that that will do it. But he needs our cooperation. He needs us to be willing to go through it, not shaking our fist at him, our fists at him, but putting our hands together and praying to him. Instead of being angry with him, be delighted in the fact that he cares enough for us 
to do a great work. He said, I'll finish the work that I began in you. I will be faithful to complete the work that I began in you. And that work is to conform you to the likeness of my son that you might have fellowship, intimate fellowship with him. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They'll soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not be faint. Through all the trials and tribulations that Paul experienced, he grew stronger and stronger and stronger. He had more stamina, more endurance to finish the race. I don't believe there's a person in here that's a quitter. I believe everyone here wants to finish the race and finish it strong. I don't believe there's a person here that likes to be defeated. I believe every one of us wants to stand on the victor's podium. That we want to be victorious. We want to come out on top. To do that we're going to need endurance. We're going to need stamina. And going through those difficult and challenging times builds stamina. It builds endurance in order to overcome our enemies. You see the struggle you're in today is producing the strength you're going to need for tomorrow. The struggles you're in today are producing the strength that you're going to need for tomorrow. Because the giants just seem to be getting bigger and bigger every day. They don't get smaller. Our challenges get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so we need more strength, more stamina, more endurance. You see it's getting up after you fall that builds great strength. Getting up after you've been knocked down builds strength. When you get knocked down and you've been standing on the rock leaning upon that pillar you've got a fall, solid foundation to rise up, to stand up and to continue on. There's one final thing. It teaches us to fully rely on God. To fully rely on God. In Psalm 28, 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him and He helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song I praise Him. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him and He helps me. When you're going through difficult and challenging times, some frustrating times can you say the same thing if not that might be a weak spot in your life if you find yourself becoming anxious and you are starting to panic and you are starting to worry that may be there those may be areas that you need to strengthen or maybe you've been relying on your own strength and your own abilities and now you find that your own strength and your own abilities are not getting the job done. Maybe that is a weakness that's an area that God is trying to fix. Maybe it's a matter of simply falling to your knees and lifting up your hands and saying, God, I can't do this, but you can. Whatever it is. God is about a great work in your life and Paul is a testimony. So what can you learn in and through your suffering? Paul learned a lot about his weaknesses. So as you go through your trial and your tribulation, look for the weaknesses in your life. Look for where you're weak in your faith. Is it your trust in God? Is it your belief in God? Is your dependence on God? Maybe you're standing on a foundation made of sand and not the solid rock, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Maybe you're trusting in human strength and ability and human wisdom and human intellect and not on the Bible, the truth, the manna from heaven, the living word. What is it? Every one of us is going to face a trial, but are we going to take advantage of that difficult and challenging time to learn something about ourselves? Because once you learn, once God points out that area in your life where you are weak, then it's simply a matter of you now working on that area through the power of the Holy Spirit, making it strong so that you stand firm. So when the storm comes, you don't get knocked down. 
Let's bow our heads. Let's, let's go to the Father in prayer. Let's